Welcome to a Bailiwick Express podcast. This is Focus, a deep dive into a pressing issue facing the Bailiwick of Guernsey. Thank you for joining us. It can sometimes seem as if there's never been more awareness around mental health and the benefits of mental well-being. But anyone can still suffer in silence and many people are. This past week has been all about encouraging people to be aware of their mental health and in particular how moving more can benefit your well-being. I'm Laura Clayton and this week, as part of my day job, I got to spend some time in the sunshine at the KG5, watching and kind of taking part in a walking football session organised as part of Mental Health Awareness Week. Amanda Hibbs, Communications and Events for Guernsey Mind. Okay, so Mental Health Awareness Week, what is it all about? So it's an annual event that happens and they have a theme every year and the theme for this year is Movement for Your Mental Health. And Mental Health Awareness Week, why do we need a week to focus on it or to raise awareness? Well, as we all know, it's not just about the week. I mean, um, and that's one of the things that we do at Guernsey Mind um, is that mental health and your mental fitness and your mental well-being is important every day of the year yeah. um, but it, I think it just helps focus during this week um, that it helps helps everybody focus just a little bit more um, but we will be carrying this on sort of like all year. I mean, we know don't we physical health and mental health are so intertwined yeah. this is very well documented. It is they go hand in hand they really do um, so we just wanted to show this week how accessible and how easy it can be just to get a little bit more active in your day. And it's not about doing sport um, at a high level it's not about running marathons or riding your bike around the island 10 times on a Sunday morning or anything like that is it no it's about just moving yes absolutely Um, so that's why we've come down today this is what a great bunch of people it is down here at walking football Um, but it's even if if you if you're getting up and making a a cup of tea when you're waiting for the kettle to boil just have a little stretch and walk around the kitchen Mm. Um, put on your favorite sort of like (laughs) radio station or music and have a dance around the lounge it's just just trying to get more activity into your day yeah, because what I noticed when I was looking through particularly the events list for this week, there's a lot going on, which some people could find overwhelming, mm-hmm. um, but it was really just to give people an opportunity to have a taster Absolutely. of events like yeah. the walking football, I saw walking netball, Yes, you know, that was a new one for me, um, but also green prescribing I've been reading about, yeah. you know, that's really interesting, but then there were also lots of other things, yoga and lots of things that would be come, come under mindfulness I'm guessing, Yeah. so it was just a taster really wasn't it, to yeah. let people know what's out there on a regular basis. Exactly and that, I mean we've got, we've been working with Bailiwick Social Prescribing yeah. as well and with Health Improvement Commission and Sports Commission Um, because for for an island of our size there is so much out there there really is something for everybody Um, and sometimes it's just a case of getting out there having a go and seeing what's best for you it's what it's very easy for us to say as we're both physically fit able to stand here and you know we could kick a football around (laughs) probably not with much skill but I could go and kick a football around Um, it's very easy isn't it to say move more it's good for you Mm. but for people who really do struggle and how how is it getting the message across to them well I think what it is, is is they've got to feel in the right space to be mm. able to do something um, and as and when they're ready it's just to know that there are people out there who will support them yeah. and will help them um, but we appreciate that not everybody can do it now but at some time in the future at least they know that there are people out there who can support them one of the things I saw when reading up about this week was about is it small steps yes. take a small step and just you, you don't have to sort of like think oh right I'm going to get up and run a marathon tomorrow it is about those small steps mm. and just trying to think about it on uh, every day and if there's some days that you don't do anything don't let that knock you back it's just sort of like get back on and do it again tomorrow Guernsey Mind has been working with the Health Improvement Commission, Bailiwick Social Prescribing and the Sports Commission this week to raise awareness of those benefits of moving more for your mental health, as well as your physical health, of course. Nikki Will from the Sports Commission said that is at the very core of what they do. There's a, there's a wealth of evidence from across the, the world, actually, that, that shows that taking part in sport at whatever level and keeping active is really positive for both your physical and your mental health. And uh, although this is a special week where we're really thinking about it, that goes for year round. 
but it's not actually about sport itself is it you don't need to be out there playing a competitive sport or running a marathon or riding around the island every weekend it's actually just about physical activity isn't it just doing something to keep you moving it is um, obviously at the sports commission we're very focused on sport um, but there are levels of sport um, and you know one of our mission statements is that everybody should have the opportunity to participate at whatever level and there are so many sports that offer those fun just come along have a go uh, like today you know this this well-being walking football session was loads of fun but it has a fair, fairly serious purpose behind it and it's helping uh, people come back into sport people who may have health difficulties to come down be with a group of like-minded people kick a ball around learn some skills but actually you'll have seen it's great fun and yeah um, you know it was there was the banter on the pitch and uh, you know I, I kept being told not to run because it's really hard not to run in walking football because yeah. you're, you're so used to uh, playing sport at uh, a faster pace yeah. but the camaraderie was fantastic and and the inclusion you know everybody was involved doesn't matter what your your level of ability um, everybody was involved everybody was joining in everyone was scoring you know it was just really really good fun and I saw on the list of events for this week as well, there's also walking netball. And uh, one of the chaps I was chatting to said, you know, there's talk about walking hockey and rugby and cricket and all sorts of things. So it's about making sports more accessible and making them accessible for longer in life. Absolutely. I mean, currently, yes, uh, walking netball operates on a Sunday morning uh, and that's still going strong. But at the Sports Commission, we're actually bringing over a gentleman, Stuart Langworthy, who's the uh, England over 60s captain for walking football. Right. And they play international. Yeah. and he's coming over to run a seminar for the Sports Commission where hopefully we're going to inspire other sports to think about what they might be able to offer mm. at a slower pace where they can include, uh, as I say, you know, people with some of those health difficulties, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, maybe those who are recovering from heart disease, um, because people genuinely love sport and sometimes when you stop playing because you've had a health difficulty you know that can really mm. impact your mental health so you know I think the sports commission is going to try and challenge other sports to think about what they can do to offer a slower paced version of their sport particularly during the daytime when uh, you know people are looking for for things to do you know I think sometimes it can feel a bit daunting um, you know oh am I is it going to be too competitive for me am I going to be able uh, to join in you know will I be when you know I might not be good enough and I think we've got to try and uh, break down that barrier and, and really you know welcome everybody into sport and as I say you know challenge our sports particularly those who have development officers uh, to think about what they might, might be able to offer because we're an aging demographic at the end of the day keeping our older population healthy and active is going to bring lots of uh, financial dividends to be honest with you uh, in terms of healthcare in the future so it's a really easy thing to do so let's do more of it. My name's Trevor Crittell. I'm actually the treasurer and director of the Guernsey Walking Football Club. It's oh, the 10th yeah. anniversary this year. Yeah. I personally started uh, in 2019, so I've been playing for five years. It, it's what it says on the tin, really. Yeah. It, it is football, but in walking, it's a, a slower version of 11 aside football or 5 aside for the more old elderly people our club is we, we've restricted it to over 50s now so but we've we've got we have got people 50 um but we've have got some people in their 80s playing yeah. uh, and various previous skill levels but uh it, it is walking but definition of walking it is it's only in your own mind okay <laughs> so it can be quite quick walking. it can be very quick walking okay the def difference between walking and running can be uh, open to question. Okay. That, that's, okay. that's 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 the problem. But, uh, but it, more... it, it is more sedate, probably the right word. Do you need to have played football before? Not at all. No, we've well here today. We've got a lady who's never kicked a football before. She's in her eighties. We've got a chap who comes uh, in our. Uh, regular sessions uh, he's, he's in his 80s he'd never played football before I believe he was a hockey player okay. but, he, but he, he'd never played football before he loves it he comes twice a week yeah. and uh, it's, it's, it's doing him good it's doing all of us good now, everybody's accepted yeah. okay. um, we, we've got uh, probably our regular sessions about six or seven ladies who come wow. regularly okay. and they're just, just accepted it, you know just, just generally yeah. just join in yeah. the reason why we're here today is as part of Mental Health Awareness Week um, it's all about moving more yeah. and we, it's, it's well known isn't it we all know that actually if you move more if you physically 
move it's better for your mental health and that pays into what you're doing here with the uh, the well-being Wednesdays exactly that football. yeah yeah very much so and I I mean my view is what, what you're doing this for an hour yeah. you're forgetting about everything else that that's that's my view on it you're sort of any problems you've got yeah. you can you, you're just worrying about whether you can kick the ball straight <laughs> which usually can't Fantastic. yeah I mean a two, yesterday afternoon session uh, there was a chap who I was at primary school with and secondary school been nagging him to come along another one of our who we were at school with he, he saw him on uh, the weekend and snagging him um, one of the other people lives two doors away from him he was in the, in the end he said I had to come along and give it a go so he came along and he said see you next Tuesday so yeah. it's, it's that sort of thing Yeah. Paul Rogers yeah I've been playing for four years um played proper football till I was 63 and then took this up and not looking back there is no speed but actually yeah. in terms of the amount of exercise you, or effort you have to put into it <clears throat> it is quite significant yeah and I know from my heart rate it gets up to 137 when I'm playing a game which is called vigorous so it's good exercise for you from and that point of view how regularly are you playing you until coming? Christmas I was playing three times a week okay. and I, I had a heart attack in February and then I went to cardiac rehab. Now I've been going to these sessions for four weeks uh, and I'm going back to normal football, like normal walking football sessions next week. So, okay. so yeah, it's been good for me to get back to it, you know, and just keep my exercise going. Uh, one of the biggest things with it, my wife plays, okay. so we both play and the social side of it is amazing. Yeah. You know, fun, friendship and fitness, it sounds a bit coy, but it's true, all of those three things, yeah. fun, friendship and fitness, uh, are, are key. And I was made so welcome when I came the first time. And you feel very vulnerable when you come the first time. If anybody's thinking about it, don't feel vulnerable. Just come down and we'll make you, make you uh, feel at home. Yeah. And that was a big thing for me. And Fantastic. It, yeah. I mean, because one of the reasons why we're down here is part of Mental Health Awareness Week. And we all know, don't we, physical health, fitness, activity, it's so positive for your mental well-being and mental health. And have you found that? I've absolutely found that. I look forward to it. And yeah. if you look forward to something and it's exercise, yeah. that's got to be the best thing. Yeah. I don't have to go in the gym because I don't like the gym. Yeah. Um, I like <laughs> playing either. football. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it, I'm meeting people. It's competitive as far as you want it to be. If, if we have a mid-80s player, Keith, who came, um, I don't know, two or three years ago, and I said hello to him the first time he was here. And I said, when did you last play football, Keith? He said, oh, I've never played football. Oh, right. And he's still playing. Yeah. He still plays with us. And if you look at our video on, on, on the website, you'll see Keith yeah. saying, the reason I play is because I'm not very good. I'm getting better, but I'm not very good, and people don't make me feel like I'm not very good. Yeah, everyone's involved. Yeah, and everyone's part of the team. It's all it's all different levels. You yeah. know, some people have played at Prio level, you know, in, in their past, going back mm. a long dis distance time. But when you're seventy-ish, which I'm, I'm seventy-one, when you're seventy, you can't you can't do that anymore, mm. um, and it just gets you out. And it's doing something which we've all done. You have to change your habits to do it, um, but it's enjoyable, and, and you know, you're outside. Not in a gym, I'm not in, in inside, yeah. even in the winter. doesn't matter what the weather is, apart from lightning and anything that's yeah. you know, da danger to our safety. But, you know, we're playing anything. And you feel like you've done something. You know, on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, you know, by 10 o'clock you're finished. Yeah. At half past 10, you're changed and ready again, and the rest of the day's in front of you. And you just feel like you've done something and enjoyed it. And it's that looking forward to it that really is important for me from a mental side of it. Mm. I've got something that actually I can get up in the morning for. I'm retired now. Yep. You need stuff like this uh, when you're retired. Um, and this is just another level. My name is John Casey. I'm known as JC. I am a coach here along with the other four lads who are yeah. coaches. So everybody's different here. There's no platform at mm. all. Yeah. Uh, and we'd say we do on a Wednesday 12 to 1. Yep. We have tea and coffee afterwards. But it's more about fun. You know, uh, like, That's the thing that I think really came across. Everyone came off smiling. Yes. There was lots of banter that I could hear, most of it coming from you. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I, I think being a Brummie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say an ex-Brummie, because now I've been in Guernsey 20-odd years. Right. I'd love to be a Guern, but that's how it is. But uh, no, it's part of my humour. I yeah. don't like anybody being serious. And you can also see if somebody's down in the dumps, mm. they're on the field and they're in the world of their own, then I, then I go over to them, yeah. Gimmer, what's it all about? Hey, yeah. come on, let's get the ball. She's no better than you. You got him beating you. He ain't that good. He thinks he is, but you're a lot better. And then you, know, you, you get them going again. Yeah.
and uh, and that, that's part part of it. Yeah. And uh, in my younger days, I was on the Villa books, right. uh, training with them, what have you. Okay. Uh, I didn't make the grade because I had an attitude problem where I wouldn't train, but that was that. Uh, then I played in 11 side football on a Saturday and a Sunday and a Monday night, and uh, up to a very good standard. Yeah. Then. Uh, also, when I was what, about 35, I started to manage an under nines uh, boys football team, yep. uh, along with me playing on the weekend as well. And then and I took that further up till they went to open age, which was 18. Mm -hmm. And then at 18, I played with them, which was wonderful. Right. And we won everything. Yeah. Uh, I am a little bit of a joker. Uh, I, I do play serious, but I, I'm fair. And I don't like people being picked on. Mm -hmm. And you can tell I'm a bit of a midget, and the, the bigger they are, the worse they get off me. <laughs> yeah. And then at, at 46, I had to finish because I had a hip problem and that. We came over to Guernsey mm -hmm. 24 years ago, and uh, I was just doing all kinds of sports. Then I heard about walking football uh, seven years ago, and I, I've joined in with that. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. And then there was this gap where people with Parkinson dementia and that uh, could come on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was quite serious. So two years ago, myself and, and Phil, one of the senior coaches, decided to set this up. Yeah. And, and it's worked a treat. Yeah. And we got three more lads, uh, John, Sh Sh Sean, uh, Martin and Trevor. And uh, so we got five coaches. Everybody's looked after. The reason we were invited along today was as part of Mental Health Awareness Week. It's all about moving more and you, you know improving your physical health for your yes. mental health. Yes. And this is a great example of that. As I said, everyone oh, yes. came off smiling. Oh yes. And yeah. that's got to be the yes. best sign of something benefiting yeah. your mental health. Well, so, well, I have a health problem as well. I'm a type 1 diabetic. Okay. I have been for 45 years now. And um, we also got another player. Uh, he's a type 1 diabetic, which mm. I keep an eye on. And during the sessions and that, I sh what's your levels? What's your level, sir, pump? And he's like, oh, it's so-and-so. Oh, you've been near the mark. Off you go. Okay. Go and, and he had sorted himself out. And then, uh, like, I've had a hypo in one session, and he spotted it. And you know, get JC some, some of his sweets, which are always in my pocket. Uh, yeah, so we, we cater for all different... Everyone looks after each other as well. I, I, and I think so. Uh, boy, being a tight-knitted group, mm -hmm. and it's open one more people to come along. Yeah. Uh, you can tell by people's mm. moods, the facial expression, how do they look? Yeah. They look a bit down today. Well, come on, then let's walk arm in arm and let's go and play something. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it is all about that. I, I, I love doing this. The, the part I find difficult is the mental side of it. Okay. I'm no religious person or nothing, but I, I generally walk down there, which is an hour to get to, set up for an hour, play for an hour, have a drink for half an hour, then I walk back. And on the way back, I, I go into church and I sit down on a pew, the sound of silence, and, and I have a tear. It's one or two of them do get to you. Yeah. You know, sorry. But, um, you know, it does get to me when you see them like, no fault of their own, they've got this horrible disease and what have you. But they come and make an effort. I mean, you know, the one lad I call Kingy, I mean, God, he's had some real downers. He's here today. Yeah. Wonderful to see him, wonderful. And he smiles. Were, and you're smiling as well. Yeah, absolutely. and so are you. Yeah. <laughs> Learning about walking football was huge fun for me earlier this week, but I keep coming back to the same thought. Not everybody likes sport. And if you don't like sport, or if you're just not able to take part for whatever reason, how can you move more for your mental health? That's where the joint approach to Mental Health Awareness Week has come in for Guernsey Mind and the Sports Commission are not alone in trying to raise awareness of moving more for your mental health. They've been working with the Health Improvement Commission and Bailiwick Social Prescribing to encourage more people to move where they can. Learning about social prescribing in particular has really opened my eyes up to so many more possibilities. I'm Trish, I'm the lead for Bailiwick Social Prescribing. Hi, I'm Jo, I'm Community Engagement Officer for Bailiwick Social Prescribing. Bailiwick Social Prescribing is a non-medical intervention for people that are suffering um, challenges in their, what we call their social determinants of health. So it can be the environment they live in or it can be the body they inhabit. They may have physical challenges, they may have mental health challenges. They may also have financial or educational challenges that they've actually got to the point where they, a tablet can't cure that kind of thing. 
So they come to us, uh, they get referred by the doctors to us. We have got all three doctors' practices that refer to us, plus Healthy Minds Guernsey refer to us. Um, and so far, in two and a half years of existence, we've had 800 referrals. Um, we're basically at one refer more than one referral a day, if you break it down to working days. So um, it's a really popular scheme. Um, at the moment, we're a pilot scheme um, up until the end of this year and hoping to go to a fully funded scheme in January. And in terms of what you then do, so you get the referrals into your mm -hmm. team, what do you then do? What are you then prescribing people? So we've got um, over 84 quality assured partners, so that's anything from Guernsey Bereavement for those that are lonely, to the GSPCA if they want to volunteer, to um, walking football if they want physical activity, base to shore, we do the community savings for those who can't access a uh, bank account. That It's just immense, the width is just huge and people, people tell us what they want, it's not about what we think they want, so people will come to us with a problem and when we ask questions that will identify something that's lacking in their lives that's making them not feel as worthwhile as they are. And so we spend about an hour with the people at the very, very beginning just talking to them to find out what they need in their life. And then what we do is we link them to services that are already out there that can help fill that gap. And then we'll help them overcome the barrier of attending because most people are nervous about going the first time and we can go with them, we can make the appointments, we can accompany them to the first session so that they got somebody they know there. Yeah. And it's about helping people, making sure everything is accessible to everybody. And what you do then isn't actually all about sport. I know we're here today at a walking football session, but it's definitely not all about sport, no, It's it? way, way wider than just sport. Sport is uh, physical activity. It's not just sport. Physical activity mm. generally is, is our biggest referral process, but that's because that's what lots of people need, is to get outside and do things. Yeah. But we work with the Guernsey Conservation Volunteers. We work with the U3A, the WI, we're all about yoga, um, uh, dancing in the dark, Tai Chi. Tai Chi it's, there's loads and loads of things out yeah. there that we can just get people to go to, talking cafes. You know, a big, a big referral reason is physical activity, which then links to mental health as well. Mm. Mental health and anxiety and stress are probably our number one referral, but we'll usually have that along with other things. So it could be they're not happy with where they live, um, they're not happy with their housing situation. It could be that they've got insecure housing or could actually be homeless. They could be looking for employment. So we're partnered with Guernsey Employment Trust. We're partnered with the So Well team and the States of Guernsey. So we can look at their employment options. It could be that they want to volunteer as a pathway to getting back to work. And we have loads of volunteering opportunities through our Quality Assured partners, as well as other signposting to entities that aren't Quality Assured by us. So we can, we can signpost anywhere and everywhere. Obviously, we like to make sure that it's a safe, it's a, it's a productive environment, it's a supportive environment. But we do signpost to things because not everybody can go through the quality assurance process. Um, for example, if uh, St Peterport Sketch Club, which is an art provision, yes. we will signpost there, but it's not a quality assured partner because they're a casual sketch club that get together on a Thursday evening. Um, but other things like walking football and all about yoga, um, and they're, they're all qu they've gone through the quality assurance process. But like you say, it's not about physical activity it's about all your social connections mm. so your social connections then empower you to feel more confident you'll pick up skills that you either didn't remember you had or maybe you didn't have and those skills will help you in every aspect yeah. of your life so you'll basically be making connections physical connections social connections environmental connections that actually will influence you and also there'll be a knock-on effect to your family your friends and the other people that you connect with and that's what we're looking for we're looking for it to be a community spirited idea that everybody in the community thinks actually we're better together making a connection it's not about oh you lot over there and we're over here it's about all of us connecting together, yeah. bridging the gaps in everybody, all of those inequalities of health, that suddenly it becomes a level playing field. A couple of things that you mentioned there, so the Guernsey Conservation Volunteers um, and the Clean Earth Trust, I think yes. it was. I noticed both of them and all about yoga and Tai Chi and dancing in the dark actually were listed on the events for this yes. week, which is Mental Health Awareness yes. Week. And the, the two that really sparked my interest were the Guernsey Conservation Volunteers yes. and the Clean Earth Trust. Because yes. I thought, what on earth have they got to do with you know, Mental Health Awareness Week? Yeah. And then I went down a bit of a rabbit hole of Googling green prescribed Yes, green um, prescribing, yeah. Yeah, which is... Green and blue, we work with both. So yeah, green is anything outside mm -hmm. and in the environment, and blue is anything on the water. 
Well, okay, yeah. you've just taught me something completely new because I didn't actually know that. So, yeah, how has this all come about then? Because it's a, it, it, there's um, there's a lot of information out there about green and blue social prescribing, as you said, um, and it seems to be a real growing movement locally. There's lots of examples locally across the UK and across the world. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think social prescribing started as it, as social prescribing, mm -hmm. which was to help people overcome barriers to accessing yeah. things they wanted. But what people have realised now is that if they can get outside and do stuff um, in the environment, then actually that's become Come now green social prescribing so places like the green the clean earth trust the Guernsey conservation volunteers yeah. have really embraced this because as far as they're concerned if we send somebody along they've got one more person for a work party and it's great because people are helping the environment and people feel good about that and the blue social prescribing we work with the sailing trust the Guernsey sailing trust okay. and the sports commission um, to get people on the water and the sea is just a, an amazing relaxing place so it's a great thing to do yeah for some people yeah for those who like the sea because everything's about what they want not about what we think they want exactly yeah. so, yeah. and <laughs> mental health awareness week then um, the, the message this year for this week has been about moving more yeah. and it can be very small yeah. movements yeah. and again it doesn't have to be sport it's that physical yeah. activity of some sort and actually if you're out with the Guernsey conservation volunteers um, pulling up, pulling up and, sour fig yeah, they have yeah. been this morning yeah. Yeah. that is a physical activity yes. isn't it so they do, it's exhausting they do go out on a work party every Wednesday morning yeah. and Saturday afternoon and they will post that on their website and say where they're going mm -hmm and everyone's welcome they have tea and biscuits I'm reliably informed and um, yeah so you'll spend a morning out in the fresh air and you'll be doing something not only which is good for yourself but it's good for the environment and making those connections mm. making those con connections and smiling along as you're doing something yeah. as part of the team is really important to your mental health and I just wanted to say one other thing that just in England recently, three authorities have piloted heritage prescribing so that um, you actually have heritage buddies and heritage connectors. So over here it would be absolutely fantastic to set up a heritage prescribing screen, scheme because we've got amazing heritage in Guernsey that going along to the Candy Museum recently for the Her Story talk and then there was a Her Story guided walk which then became a self-guided walk so they've done a leaflet you could walk for four miles around town actually looking at all the historical elements of the town and stopping and reading about them in your yeah. leaflet and actually okay. you're doing a four mile walk in St Peterport without realising it and I actually went on the guided tour with a friend and it was absolutely fantastic the passion for heritage that the guides had was amazing but this could be set up in little pockets around the island and that includes also like the Turner um, walk the Renoir walk etc mm -hmm. etc et mm -hmm. you could actually turn that into a physical activity as well a cultural activity as well as a heritage activity and therefore you're just getting the benefits of all three of those things the message is quite clear from everyone involved in mental health awareness week if we can move more it's good for both our physical and mental well-being Back to Amanda from Guernsey Mind, an organisation in particular which is very keen on supporting this message. What's been nice for this week is it gave us the reason to all come together, and, yeah. do, and it's actually been it's been really good fun to all work together. Um, and you know, everyone's out here today having a bit of fun as well, and that's so important for your mental health as well. It's it's not just the whole physical aspect, but it's the socialising aspect yeah. as well. Um, and it's it's great to see that happening today. It's one, it's very easy for us to say as we're both physically fit, able to stand here, and you know, we could kick a football around. <laughs> Probably not with much skill, but I could go and kick a football around. Um, it's very easy, isn't it, to say, move more, it's good for you. Mm. But for people who really do struggle and who perhaps are having um, a crisis in their mental yeah. health at the moment or physically don't feel able to move more, yeah. um, how, how is it getting the message across to them? Well, I think... What it is, is, is they've got to feel in the right space to be mm. able to do something. Um, and as and when they're ready, it's just to know that there are people out there who will support them yeah. and will help them. Um, but we appreciate that not everybody can do it now, but at some time in the future, at least they know that there are people out there who can support them. And actually, one of the... Um one of the things I saw when reading up about this week was about, is it small steps? Yes. Take a small step now. And yes. that's all it has to be, doesn't it? You don't have to... No, no, like get you, up and yeah, think, right, you, you don't have to think, do this every week for the rest of my life. No, it's and just, you, you don't have to sort of like think, oh, right, I'm going to get up and run a marathon tomorrow. It is about those small steps mm. and just trying to think about it on uh, every day. And if there's some days that you don't do anything, don't let that knock you back. It's just sort of like 
get back on and do it again tomorrow. Yeah, and in terms of actually physical health, Guernsey Mind, obviously you've got the Mind 10K coming we up have. this year. That's now a permanent fixture on the Guernsey it is, calendar, isn't yes. it? Very well supported. But people could set a goal to do that. I believe, yes. is there a 5K again this year as well? Well, what we're doing this year, um, particularly for the 10K, is that we're actually setting people a challenge. Okay. So we're making it a 10K challenge. Um, so we know there's a lot of 5K races out there, so or, or events out there. So making people maybe think about, well, I've done a 5K, mm. can I step up to a 10K? Um, and we've actually got some training plans which we're going to be issuing um, for that. So it's, it's about that challenge. And if people have run a 10K before, maybe they can push themselves just that little bit more it's about having that challenge um the other event that we've got coming up which has become an annual event is our sunrise walk of yes. hope um so that's coming up at the end of june which is just a, a, a lovely event it's a very early start it's four o'clock in the morning but oh it's worth it it really yeah. is yeah i've done the walk actually um in previous years um it's surprising how difficult it is to get up and get to the start yes. line and then it hits you later in the day yes. but it's worth it isn't it because oh yeah it, it's a yeah, it's difficult to describe. It's a very emotional event in a way because you are walking into the sunrise. Into the sunrise, yeah. And of course, you know that the the um, behind that one, behind the sunrise walk of hope, is that it is um, about uh, creating awareness around suicide um, and those that have been affected. Um, and it, when you're walking along the front and that sun is coming up it, over the islands, it really is quite special. Yeah, so people can still sign up for that one. It's oh, coming yes. up in June, but yes. there's still time to sign oh, up. Oh, lots of time for that one, yep. And so uh, Where can people find out information about um, these events? Oh, they're on our website, so mm -hmm. www.guernseyminds.org.gg. You've been listening to a Bailiwick Express podcast. If you like what you heard, please share, like and subscribe so we at Bailiwick can continue to pull apart the stories that affect you, the listener. Thank you for joining us.